Hey, 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 how's it going, do it yourselfers? Today I'm gonna to go over some of the techniques that used car dealers like my cousin Tony use in order to see whether a car's been in an accident or whether it's had its panels repainted or not. Then I'll also teach you about their secret weapon that you can also use that aids them in this process. And it goes without saying, if you can identify whether a car's been in an accident or not, or even has had its panels repainted, uh, it will potentially save you thousands of dollars because you can either, when you buy a car, you know, get a discount hopefully, or if you're selling a car, it's good to know the history of your car, especially if you're not the original owner. So make sure you watch this video all the way to the end. All right, so let's say you're interested in a car, you show up to a house or a used car parking lot, and if you wanna check it out and make sure it hasn't been an accident, as far as you can tell, some of you may know the best way to tell is to check out all the body lines, but where is the best place to take a look at these body lines to be able to tell whether they're off or not, which would indicate potentially that that car has been an accident now. Not counting for the hood or the trunk right now, the best place to look at the body lines is definitely not from the front, it's actually from the rear. Exactly right here at a 30 to let's say 45 degree angle. Because if you're back here and let's say whether this uh, passenger door or the driver door or the front fender has been damaged previously and it's a little bit off, you can spot that difference a lot easier. So yeah, basically you would just look at the body lines from the top of the car all the way down to the bottom on this side. Make sure it's not sticking out or sticking in. If it's sticking out, let's say a little bit, you will you will spot that a lot easier than from the front. Then you do the same thing for this side. You know, you look at the body lines from the top to the bottom, make sure it's even, it's not sticking out or sticking in it. Same thing for the, for the left front fender, make sure it's all even. Whereas if you were to look at the body lines from the front, let's say, it's gonna be sticking out here a little bit. You wouldn't be able to as easily spot it. In fact, you may miss it because you know the both panels are the same color and if it's sticking out, you're not gonna see a dark area. It's just gonna blend into each other and you're gonna miss it. So yeah, this is the first thing you need to do. You do it on both sides. You check out the passenger side at the 45, 30, 45 degree angle. And then you do the driver's side as well. Just make sure when you're, if you're looking at a car that's on the side of the road and you're switching from the passenger to the driver's side and you're trying to focus on the body lines, you don't step into oncoming traffic. All right, now when checking the body lines on the hood, well, this one's pretty straightforward. You look at it from the front of the car. You can also look at it from the side, but that may not be the best uh, area to look at them. Uh, you just wanna make sure the hood has even spacing all the way from the front to the back on both sides. Because if, if it doesn't have even spacing, if it's a little uh, off, that could mean either uh, the hood was replaced poorly, the car has frame or subframe damage, uh, or maybe one of the fenders was replaced and they did that poorly as well and it's not on one side it's off the adjustment or the, the spacing is off but either way you should have even spacing all the way around on both sides of the your hood. Same goes for the spacing between the fender and the headlights you should have even spacing on this side between the fender and the bumper as well uh, between the bumper and the grill or the hood whatever however your car is set up those spacing should all be even and you should match on both sides. And same thing goes for your trunk or your tailgate. The spacing needs to be even all the way around. The spacing between your tailgate or your trunk and your rear bumper cover needs to be even as well. If it's off, then that could potentially mean that that car has been in a rear end collision and you need to inspect it further, make sure there's no frame damage. All right, next we're gonna check out something that's very important and a lot of people think they would spot it, but they actually don't. And if it's off, it's gonna indicate at the very best mechanical problems at the worst frame or subframe damage and that is to make sure the spacing between the wheel and the front fender and the rear panel is fairly even and I'm talking about the spacing between here and here now it doesn't have to be exactly even but you know you need to check out each wheel you know you take a step back and look at it straight ahead again make sure you're not stepping into oncoming traffic uh, make sure the spacing is even it's not sticking way out to one side or the other because if that's the case that's at the very best the mechanical issue at the worst frame or subframe damage and you do this for every wheel you go all around the four corners of the car and make sure uh, that they're all fairly even uh, spacing on both sides all right next we can look for evidence of overspray now it goes without saying if a panel has been Oversprayed or repainted it, that doesn't necessarily mean that panel's been severely damaged or that car's been in a major end collision. It just simply means that panel's been resprayed. Now we don't, you know, may not be able to tell the reason right off the bat, but still, if you can spot the, the panel's been that has been resprayed and show it to the to the seller, the evidence that which makes it conclusive that that panel has been resprayed, you can bargain a lot better and potentially save thousands of bucks. All right, so how can you find evidence of a panel that has been resprayed? All right, so let's take this hood. For example, which 
does need to be resprayed, and I'm gonna do it for in a separate video, so stay tuned for that one. So yeah, when the time is to respray the hood on this car, what I'm gonna do is basically cover the fenders, uh, the entire car pretty much, but it's important, and not everybody does it this way, to cover the entire inside of this fender. Yeah, so if you just put tape here, and then put your uh, plastic sheet or cover or whatever here, uh, that tape is not gonna go all the way in, and then when you're spraying, your base or especially your clear coat is gonna go past that tape and it's gonna leave a mark on the inside of this fender. Let me pop the hood, I'll show you guys better. So yeah, basically the tape just goes up to here, but then when you're spraying with the hood back down, that, that, that clear coat is gonna sneak in and it's gonna leave a mark on the inside of this fender. And that's how you can check out for evidence of overspray. You open the hood, check inside of the fenders, you do it on both sides. Same thing goes for the doors. You can open them and then on the inside of the, this rear door, Right here, you can check for evidence of overspray. And same thing here for the rear door and the rear quarter panel. Now, one other thing that's very important to check for the front of the car, and that is your radiator support. Now, it's hard to see it on this car because it's covered by these plastic shields, but I'll show it to you in a minute on the Prelude. You want to make sure that it's, you know, even and it hasn't been messed with, uh, preferably, it's obvious that it's the original radiator support. So here, it's a lot easier to see on the Prelude. You want to check this uh, support right here, make sure that it's not damaged, bent out of shape, and best yet, it's the original radiator support, which is the case for this car. You also wanna check the, you know, the bolts on the fenders, make sure they've not been tampered with. A lot of times it becomes obvious if they've been replaced, you know, they don't, they have scratch marks on them and whatnot. Again, that doesn't necessarily mean that that car has severe damage, it could just mean that the fender's been replaced and Resprayed. Now also for the rear of the car, you want to open your trunk or your tailgate and check out the plug welds on the side. So on this car, for example, it's going to be hard to show you, but you can see some plug welds down there. Basically, you want to check out this, uh, this jam up here, make sure it's not bent out of shape. It looks even on both sides. There's some plug welds up here. You want to check those out, make sure they're all factory. If they're not factory, they usually stand out. And, or they are, you know, look one way and on one side, look different on the other side. So you want to make sure you check all those out. And if you have a sedan with a spare wheel, a spare, spare wheel well, you want to, you know, open that and check out that uh, wheel well area as well. Make sure it's not, hasn't been, uh, you know, welded back, back together, which would indicate that car has been a rear end collision. All right, so if you follow these techniques, at the very least, it will allow you to not buy a complete lemon. But now onto the secret weapon, used car dealers use to sell cars. And that is to have a very aggressive salesperson and a very attractive closer. All right, so kidding aside, I'm talking about a coating depth or thickness gauge. This guy that you see right here. So yeah, by using this thickness gauge, you can go around and measure the thickness of the paint on each panel and compare it to the other panels on the car. Now, there's gonna be some slight variance from one panel to another. Actually, there's gonna be some variance from one area of the same panel to another area of the same panel. But if let's say uh, this hood has been repainted and this fender has not been repainted, it will stand out. You know, it'll, it'll, I'll show you in a minute uh, how it will stand out and you can be able to tell quite conclusively that that, that panel has an extra layer of painting, paint on it. And then you show that to the seller or the customer or whatever and then you can use that to bargain. Now these thickness gauges come with different options. This is a very basic one, it's for 70 bucks. I put a link to it in the description box for those of you that are interested. But basically you turn it on, pressing that button, then you wait a few seconds, and then you set your unit of measurement. Now you got two options here. You have that, see that UM, that's for microns and then mils. Well, we're gonna set it to mils, which is not to be uh, mistaken for millimeter. Now basically one mil, I'm pretty sure equals one thousandths of an inch or 0 0.001 inches if you're interested. And it's not the same as millimeters, again, let's not confuse it with that. So next you basically put it on the panel and this sensor on the bottom will take your measurement. So just place it flat on the panel and boom, hopefully you guys can see that says 4.88 mils. All right, so we can just measure a couple of more areas on the panel. Again, notice that it's gonna be a variance between areas on the same panel as well, but it's not gonna be a huge variance. So here we got 5.5. Here where there's barely any clear coat left, we should have less. Yeah, we have 3.04. So it shows you that it shows you the difference between the area that has some clear coat next compared to the area that has nearly no clear coat. 
So yeah, so you know, and so let's say on this area that we have about a 4.9 and a 5. Point, like uh, now it shows this area shows 5.5 again. So let's say it's about uh, 4.9 to 5.5. That's the average on this panel, let's say. So now we just compare it to the fender that's down here, for example. By the way, there's an area in this car that this is going to tell us that it has extra layer of paint on it, and then we're going to use the techniques we just talked about to confirm that as well. So yeah, we're just going to work our way around and you'll notice it as well. All right, so hopefully you guys can see this. It's got 4.97 on the fender on this side, which is about the same as the hood. Let's just do another area, 4.82. That's about the same. We'll move over to the driver's side door. We got 5.07. That's about the same. 3.89 or 4. Now that's about a mil off from the other area on the same panel. But if you do another measurement here, let's say 3.5, 3.59, 4.24. Now on the same panel, we have a little bit of a difference, but it's not huge enough to indicate whether this, uh, this, uh, this panel has been resprayed or not. Now this is the left passenger door. Now we got a, quite a big jump here. We got a 6.48 here. Let's do another area. Another 6.43. 6.43 again. So 6.45 again. All right, so here's what we have so far. On the hood, the front fender, we had about five, five mils or so, a little bit more. And then we got here, we had five mils to there, but then we got to this area. It went down to 3.5, was it? 3.5 or 4. But this is a very common area for the door, this, this driver door, to be polished, wet sanded and polished, because, you know, people, you know, they use their keys, they scratch up the door, they have groceries, and, you know, they always, this door gets the most use, obviously. So there's always scratches, especially around this area. And then, you know, they get it polished, wet sanded and, you know, polished and whatnot. And then whenever you wet sand and polish, you remove some clear coat and decrease the thickness of the paint in that area. So that could be what happened here. But then when we moved here, we jumped up to 6.5, uh, which definitely means that this, this door probably has been resprayed. Now we're going to check this quarter panel. And if it's as high as this, then that would mean that this door and the quarter panel were resprayed at some point. Uh, so yeah, let's go check on that. All right. 5 5.2, 5.0, 5.13, 4.66, 4.25. All right, so there you have it. According to our coating thickness gauge, we have more paint on this panel compared to that panel and the rear quarter panel as well. So. Now the body lines on this door are fine, but let's check for uh, evidence of overspray. All right, so if there is uh, overspray, it's gonna be between the door and the rear quarter panel, maybe. So let's see. And yep, there sure is. Hopefully this camera is gonna be able to pick this up, but if you look closely right here, you can see the difference right here. And it goes all the way up and down this area. Now another thing that points to this door either being uh, replaced or fixed is that this hinge over here you can see evidence of scratch scratches on this thing as it goes as it goes inside and outside the door it, you know there obviously shouldn't be those scratches on there and let me take this off. So yeah if you look closely as I move this door back and forth that travels between it and it's not catching right now but at some point it did and that's how it has all these scratches on here. So yeah, if we were interested in this car, let's say we wanted to buy it, we would point this out to the seller, especially if it's a private party seller, you know, the numbers on the paint thickness gauge, also the, the things we just went over, we would point those out. And then, you know, there's a good chance he's gonna be more flexible on the price then. All right, so again, these uh, thickness gauges come in a variety of different options. This is a pretty basic one, 70 bucks on Amazon. Again, link down below in the description box if you're interested. And you can get more expensive ones that give you the thickness of each layer of the paint on the panel. Because, you know, as you may know, you have a primer coat, then you have the paint or base coat, and then you have the clear coat on each panel. Now, if, especially the clear coat is very important to know, especially if you're going to be polishing or wet sanding and polishing a panel. It's very important to know how much clear coat you have on that panel. Otherwise, you're on the risk of polishing or wet sanding through the clear coat and then really damaging the paint on that panel. So if, you're, if that's something that you're interested in finding out, then I suggest you buy a more expensive 
uh, thickness gauge that gives you those parameters. But if you're interested in just uh, getting a general idea of what the condition of the paint is on the panel, or, you know, like we did, try to find out whether a panel has been repainted or not, then this 70 bucks, 60, 70 dollar uh, thickness gauge will do just fine. So yeah, when you take in your car to get its trade-in trade value or get it appraised and the used car dealer comes back in a couple of minutes and tells you exactly which panels have been resprayed or damaged and tries to beat down on the price uh, that's gonna offer you, this is one of the tools they use among the other techniques that I just showed you. Now, before you go, do me a favor and subscribe. Also hit that bell notification so that you're notified of my future videos that will be coming out. And in the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, check out these videos that I'll put on the screen on this side. There'll also be videos in the suggestion box. You can click and watch them and that'll work as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.